What's up everybody, I'm Kevin from Mathers on the Map and welcome to the next Van Build episode, which is part two of a two-part series on the upper cabinets. In this episode, we are showing you how we installed them and secured them to the wall and the ceiling, as well as finish the face frame, the cabinet doors, the hinges that we chose, the gas struts that we used, and we take you through it step by step. This video episode spans across multiple months. So you're going to see some previous clips of the van kind of in bare bone shape compared to where it's at now. But we wanted to document the entire course and it took a good amount of time to get everything finished. So let's do a deep dive and get into the details here and I hope you like it. All right, so we are going to put the upper cabinet that is now painted on the driver's side. And we have just one inch. Number eight, <laughs> one and five eighths inch uh, construction screws to drill them into place. We're going to be drilling them into a furry strip on the wall, as well as the furry strip in the ceiling here. So wish us luck. There goes nothing. This is a star. I know. That's right. It's a star bit, so you don't uh, strip them when they're going in. All right, so when you're putting this up, I really recommend using two people. And then if you can see in the video, I know it's going really fast. We use a piece of wood that was just the right length to help support the cabinet. Then we also use a tape measure along the bathroom wall to ensure that it was level because the van itself isn't level, so it's difficult to actually use a leveling tool. All right, so we got the upper cabinet in. You can see here, I am screwing into the fairing strip up here and then into the fairing strip on the bottom there. And this is really solid, this isn't moving anywhere. And I did put a screw and I might put one more from the half inch plywood to the cabinet so you can see that right up there. So next thing to do is to put the face frame on. And the reason why we didn't put up the face frames originally is because I wasn't sure how it was gonna lay against the ceiling as well as the side wall here because I knew there would be potentially a bit of a gap. So I wanna put the face frame on after so I can make sure that the face frame goes on flush against this wall here, sealing up the gap. And what I'm gonna be doing or using to make this happen is, uh, three quarter inch poplar furring strips and I'll be using uh, three inch wide and one and a half inch wide for the face for the face frame and I'll be using uh, a Craig jig to countersink the screws in so they won't be visible to the eye they'll only be visible from the inside here so uh, time to measure this up and then make our cuts and paint it and then we'll be putting the face frame on our upper cabinets all right, so the tools needed to make your face frame are a pocket jig or Craig jig, tape measure, right angle, right edge, or a square. Um, you need your clamp for the Craig jig or the pocket jig, and then your poplar strips to make the furring strips. And a miter saw. All right, so we got the face frame on the upper cabinet completed here, and it's gonna look like this. And we put the pocket hole, you put this countersink, pocket hole sink, whatever you call it, in the back of the face frame so you won't be able to see it. And then we will just nail these into the cabinet once it's done being painted. That's 
So Kevin built this face frame. It's wider on the sides and the top, smaller on the bottom. Don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Made out of three quarter inch poplar. And it will go. And it's like gonna go so. just like this. And the reason why we did thicker on the top versus the bottom is because of the cabinet doors. I believe if you have it thicker up top and the, the actual door of the cabinet is lower, then you'll be able to get more of a, an opening here. So now we're just going to use a nail gun with an inch and five eighths of a nail, I think, and just nail this right into place, hoping that I get it right without missing any spots. All right, ready? That's it. Face frame is on. Now we'll use our putty to clean it up. One thing we forgot to do when we put the face frame on was put wood glue on as well. So we nailed it, but we forgot to do wood glue. Not a big deal, but if we're going to do it, if we, if we were to do it again, we would definitely put wood glue on this side and we'll make sure we do it for the kitchen side. Got it. All right, so this is the upper cabinet that's gonna house my electrical compartment. So you can see we have a divider here and I have a hole down here so I could run my six gauge wire to my two fuse blocks. I have all my 16 gauge wire and 12 gauge wire here coming from the top accessories that are wired around the van. I also have a few coming from this side here. So two cutouts. One there, one there, and then a third one for the bottom. So putting up the passenger side upper cabinet was very similar to the driver's side. However, instead of putting a piece of wood on the bottom from the floor, we just did it over the kitchen cabinet to help support it so we don't have to hold it up while we're ensuring that all of our wires are going to be able to get fish through above the upper cabinets and through the holes that we cut out here. So this is where you could see us just taking a look, making sure all of the wires are easily obtainable in the location that we put the cuts through in the upper cabinets as well as the bottom. And then we're getting ready to install it by screwing the one inch and five eighths construction screws into the furring strips along the ribs of the van and the ceiling and the furring strips along the wall. All right, so here's the upper cabinet. So we have two screws going into the furring strip into the roof or attached to the rib of the van, I mean. And we have two over here and then we have three going into the fairing strips against the wall and this is really tight not going anywhere so this is going to be our electrical compartment and this is where i have a bunch of wires here so i'll be having some fun over the next couple days putting together the fuse blocks and wiring everything up all right y'all I have my face frame here, or not my face frame, my cabinet door. This is just a template because I am doing an inch and a half, or no, an inch and a quarter overlay. So a pretty big overlay to cover most of this cabinet. Taylor wants the cabinet door to pretty much cover the entire thing. So that's why I got the bigger, the bigger overlay for the cabinet hinges. So now I have just a template to make sure it fits before I route everything and paint it and sand it. So this is just like a quick test. I basically just put pocket holes together. I measured it up and put pocket holes together. You can see I only did one for each side because I'm just testing, making sure everything fits. Didn't glue anything down or anything. And now I'm gonna put it up now and make sure that I can open the door before doing all the extra work. I also have pre-drilled holes to make life easier for getting this up by myself. Cool. 
it actually worked out really well. And it's pretty much, it's a little shallow, but I think Taylor will be happy and satisfied enough. And then I might have to just figure out where it's touching here. Which the beauty of these hinges, you could just make that all, um, just adjust these screws and it'll come off and you won't get that sound. All right, so the electrical compartment is a mess, so please ignore that. But I forgot to put this part of the face frame on the upper cabinet here, so I will need to add this in. I'll get this sanded down, painted, um, and then we will pocket hole it down on, underneath. It's going to be tight because we have this wall here. But now that I have this ready to go, I know my measurements. So I'm going to br bring in this side cabinet door from this edge to the middle of this and all the way down to the bottom and then a quarter an inch and a quarter on the top here we bought quarter inch and a quarter hinges overlay hinges so it'll cover most of the cabin here which is going to look really nice and you can see what it looks like on this side now i don't know if there's going to be a little bit more of a gap here than there will be here depending on where the ship lat lays on the cabinet on the ceiling there but this looks pretty good and it opens pretty nicely. We're gonna put additional hinges here that'll support the doors so they will be able to stay up. And I also need to adjust the screw here so you don't hear that sound, which will be easy to take care of. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna be measuring the entire width here. So it's about 34 and 7 eighths across and this is going to be right in the middle here i would say is 18 and 1 eighth so it's a little less than it's not in the direct center and we knew that was going to be the case because we needed enough room for our electrical and we wanted to have maximize the amount of space we can do over here we're just going to be plates and cutting board and then uh, whatever we decide to be on that side so what I'm going to do is do measure this, and again, I'm going to make this at 18 and 1 8. And then the top, so I'm measuring from the bottom of the cabinet to the edge of this, which is 13 and 1 16th. And then I need to add an inch and a quarter to 13 and 1 16th. So again, we're going 18 and 1 eighth, and then 13 and a quarter, or 13 and 1 sixteenths plus an inch and a quarter. All right, so here's what the cabinet will look like. So this is gonna be like this, 18 and 1 eighth, and then this side is gonna be 13 and 1 sixteenths plus 1 and 1 fourth, or 1 and a quarter, which is 4 sixteenths. But this is actually going to be shorter because these two pieces are going to run completely across horizontally and then you're going to have this piece. So you're going to have to subtract the distance from here and here to get this piece. So I'm going to make these two cuts first and then we'll figure out this one. All right, so if I measure up the width of these two pieces here, I know it's 5 and 1 16th, so I'm going to subtract 5 and 1 16th from both sides, and then that'll be my length for this shaded piece right here. I hope this is helping me explaining it on a piece of wood, but I try. Okay, so I have all my cuts made, and now I'm going to take it over to the router to route a a hole in the middle of this so I can stick quarter inch plywood and create the middle of the cabinet door. So I'm going to use this right over here to make that happen. One thing that I mentioned in building the closet that I want to capture here as well so you don't forget is you want to determine what sides are going to be exposed and for me and Taylor the horizontal pieces are going to be the exposed wood so we do not want to route 
through the entire piece. We want to stop it short. That way it's a nice smooth finish. For example, I'll grab a piece over here. So we want it to look like this, so we don't have a hole on the edge here. So this is exactly what it's gonna look like in the future once we get this sanded, stained, and painted, or, and then polyurethane. The router is a really nice tool, but it does get really messy, so you're gonna have a lot of wood shavings. So this is what it looks like, and I just gotta get all these shavings out of here. But this is why I was saying it gets pretty, pretty messy. So I'm doing the long pieces here. So what I'm doing, I'm lining up the router here, or the routed side piece, and then I'm just gonna go about a half inch in. And that's where I know I can go to for my cut. So my cut's gonna go start here, and then go all the way to about here. And I'll just measure this up for a half inch and then that'll be perfect. So this is the driver's side cabinet door and I know that this size works. So I'm measuring the inside cutout for the quarter inch birch. And what I'm doing is just measuring the width. So this is about 23 and a half inches. So I'm just gonna plus add one inch to it, a little less than one inch probably to give me some wiggle room because each side is a half an inch cut through, cut out. So just add half inch to this side, half inch to that side, you have one inch in total. So 23 and a half plus one inch, and I'm shaving off uh, maybe two sixteenths or one eighth. Same thing for this side. So we got about nine and one sixteenth. And this is actually easier because you could just measure what this is. So one, nine and one eighth. So I'm just going to add one inch to nine and one eighth. So ten and one eighth. Uh, this might be a little bit too thick, which I'll just shave off a little bit more if I have to. Alright, for this it looks like I need to shave off about a quarter or three sixteenths of an inch here. Alright, so I trimmed this down about a quarter of an inch, so now I'm laying it in and it's nice and flush. So this just needs to get sanded, painted, stained, and polyurethane, and it is ready to get mounted. This is what it's going to look like, and then we'll have hardware right in the middle there. All right, so we decided on a natural wood finish for the stain for the countertop. So that being said, we're gonna stain the outside of our shaker cabinets in the natural stain as well so that they match. And we'll have just a little bit of wood accents in the van and everything will be white. And here you can see that we have the wood routed 
for the slot for the quarter inch ply. So the inside of the cabinet door is gonna be white, right? Painted white. This part? The quarter inch that's right. inside. Yep, yes. so we're only staining the outside perimeter. Yes, correct. Had the wrong setting on. All right, go ahead. When you stain, you wanna go with the grain of the, bro the wood. Um, that way it follows it nicely. And then when you're done, you wanna make sure to wipe off all the excess stain because it'll actually make it a little lighter and give it a better color. And then this is the original, now natural stain. And then if we go over here, it's a little bit closer to this color. Looks good. I think so too. All right, then to make the outsides of the cabinets more durable where we're gonna touch all the time, I'm just putting a thin layer of polyurethane on top um, just to help them stay clean and all that kind of stuff. The finished product, just need to get screwed together using pocket holes. Yep. Okay, so if you didn't see the closet, the episode on building our van closet, then I'll show you how I put the cabinet doors together using a mix of pocket hole screws and wood glue. So I'll start with this big one right here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to run a bead of glue through the routed line here and then also a bead of glue on the back of the cabinet door and this is the back of it so I put the bead on the back of the quarter inch ply. And then I'm also going to put wood glue right here to connect to the other piece of poplar. That's in. You might get some excess wood glue here, which is okay. And I'm also going to need to do it the same thing here. So now what I like to do is get the clamp, make sure. We have a straight edge, so this is straight. Clamp it into place, and now I'll put the pocket hole screws in. All right, that one's done. I'll wipe off the excess wood glue on the bottom. Do this side. Taylor is measuring the middle spot, which is 14 and a quarter. When we're doing the door handle. Oh! Just did the middle. So that's a good example of what not to do. We use the hardware tool to measure the exact location of where we want to put our handles. And there's a midpoint hole where you want to determine the exact location of where you're going to put the handles. And that's exactly where I drilled instead of doing it where the screws meet the door handle. So I'm going to take you back to a video that we filmed when we were finishing the dresser cabinet where Taylor shows you exactly how to use it properly. So we have this cheaper tool that actually works pretty good for works great. getting the handles on. So we already used it to get all the tools or the whole tools, the holes in the exact place we want them. Now Taylor's just using a bigger drill bit to drill a little bit bigger holes into the wood so we can just slide these straight through and make it easier to clamp down against the handle. And this tr tool just helps it so it is in the middle of the drawer on both ways. Um, on both sides. Yeah, on both. <laughs> so this tr this tool just helps it to make sure that the <clears throat> hardware for the drawer will be in the middle of the drawer. So it'll be 
I measured the length and the width of the drawer to find the exact center point, which is in this little hole. And then when you <clears throat> measure your hardware, you just measure how big it is and then do half on each side to make sure that your holes are exactly as far apart from the center as you need. Does that make sense? I bet. And today I'm putting on the half inch overlay hinges, which are soft close. We actually use inch and a quarter overlay hinges for the upper cabinet doors. The half inch overlays were used in the build in the closet doors. And these clips are from the building the closet video, which is our previous video, link in the description below. Overlay hinges, which are soft close. And they go inside the actual cabinet using a hinge installation template that you can get from Home Depot or Amazon and it's a 35 millimeter. So we're gonna mark exactly where we want it on both sides and then drill, use the template to mark our three holes and then use the countersink drill bit to create that hole. Mark our pencil hole. All right, so that's good. So I'm putting on the hinges for the door right now and then I will screw them into place up here. I'm putting on the passenger side cabinet door and you can see that it is not the shape of the cabinet or it's sticking out a little bit. So what I need to do is adjust these screws right here. This one and this one. Same thing on this side to get the alignment correct. So I'm gonna play around with this and hopefully it'll work. All right, so I adjusted this screw right here, which brought this down a little bit and this one up. And now it's sitting flush against here. But I am a little nervous that when I put the next cabinet on, that might not be flush against here. So I'll probably have to find that happy medium. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so I wanna I wanted to put up the other cabinet door, but I can't find the hinges or I didn't buy enough hinges for an inch and a quarter overlay. So I wanna put the gas strut on the passenger side here. And I've already done it over the driver's side, which we could see right here. So I don't have to hold it up with my hands anymore. So that's super nice and going to be really convenient when we need to get something out of the cabinet and we don't want to hold it up with our hand all the time. So what it looks like in terms of pieces, the ones I got off Amazon here just come with two brackets and then five screws and it's relatively easy. There's some vague instructions on the little plastic wrapper here or plastic bag based on whether or not you want the door to come at a 100 or at a, I guess, 80 degree angle, 90 degree angle, or 110, 115 angle. And depending on how you want it, will dictate where you want your drawer slides. In this case, since we have face frames, pretty thick face frames on the sides of our cabinets, I had to adjust the gas strut and add a little extra support here because I cannot, I wasn't able to put this bracket on the actual thick poplar, piece of poplar here. So luckily for this one, I'm gonna be able to do that because I chose to use a thin one by two right here. If I use the thick one and it, interfered I would have to add another piece of quarter inch plywood right here to support this like I did right here so in terms of getting this ready um, 
you want the thin piece to be on the bottom bracket, which is the circular one, and the thick piece of the gas strut attaches to this piece. I'm going to start with the bottom, and I'm going to go about, I think, 250 to 255 millimeters from the top, and there's kind of the dimensions here. So I think I went, what's this one? 250 for this one. And it's cool because it doesn't actually touch the ceiling. So it's gonna prevent the ceiling, the cabinet from hitting the ceiling and scratching the poplar as well. So there's the angle there. So for this one, I went 250 millimeters to the bottom of the circular bracket and to the bottom of the cabinet door. So that's 250 millimeters. So I know for this side, and bear with me, hopefully you can see me now. So I'm holding it with my head. I have this to the bottom of that and then 250 millimeters and I'm just drawing a line about right here. So I know the bottom of my circle bracket is going to be along that line. Now I'm going to screw this circular bracket onto the face frame here. And since it's circular, I'm only going to be able to put screws in two of these. There are some adapters that you can get that are going to be uh, more intended for a face frame like this. Um, but I think two will be fine and we'll see how it goes. This is fun holding it with my head. Also, it needs to be about 10 millimeters in from the edge of the cabinet. So this is about 10 millimeters and here's an example of that. So there's 10 millimeters in from the first screw of the bracket. Same thing for all three types. So what I'm going to do is mark where 10 millimeters is and then put the bracket probably somewhere like that. 10 millimeters should line up to the screw of the bracket. Alright, so we got this on now. Now we just need to put the one onto the upper cabinet. Also, in order to get these gas struts onto the brackets, you need to get this metal clip and move it up. And I just do that with the screwdriver. And I'm just gonna push it up here. And hope it doesn't come back down because as soon as those metal clips wrap around the front, it locks it into place. So you can see that I got it on. Now I'm just gonna push this metal clip down and now it's locked on. So now I'm just gonna hold this up and pretty much determine the location that I wanna do. I'll put the bracket onto this and then measure up exactly where I want it. One other thing, we don't need the soft close hinges with the gas strut because it pretty much makes it a soft close. So they're a little bit more expensive so you could save money that way. What I want to make sure I do is put it in a location where when I shut the garage, when I shut the cabinet door, this metal clip is not going to push on this edge. I made that mistake for this one. So you want to make sure that when the door is closing, this, it doesn't interfere with the face frame. Perfect, no issues. Tighten this up. And then I'll put one in the back. It's 
probably better if I take this off. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so that's on. I'll put this back up. So again, if you don't have enough room here and you have to put it on here because you have thick face frames, what I did was just get a quarter inch piece of ply and then staple that through because what you don't want to do is put the screw through the door by accident and then you have a uh, screw sticking out. So you need to make it thick enough on this side and to stick to this. I use wood glue as well. I probably should have cut it down a little bit because you have a little bit of a gap there. So not the best, but it's working. So cool. I forgot to show you guys the little wall that we built in the upper cabinet. And this is gonna be for our plates and cutting board, I believe, that Taylor suggested we do, which I think is a great idea. So we're gonna have this little wall and we'll be able to stack our plates on their side so vertically i guess and this is just going to give us more room on this side to put other things so we did just a little l brackets here instead of doing nailing it in one because i wanted it to be flexible if we don't like it we could take it out rather than nailing from the bottom and having pilot holes or you know, having to fill that with wood filler, same thing with the back and on the top there. So this just gives us a little bit more flexibility. I know it's not as clean, but it'll do. All right, so I'm sorry that I couldn't finish this cabinet door. I cannot find the hinges. I might not have bought them, so I have to run to Home Depot. And I want to get this video out to you guys before delaying it any further. So this one's going to have to wait. I'll get that in. Um, everything else is pretty much ready to go. The only additional thing that I need to do is add the stops or the locks for the doors, which is what we put in our dresser here. So you can see this is installed to secure it in place and prevent it from opening. So we'll do that for both the upper cabinets here and that one as well. But I really liked how that came out. The gas struts are great, completely holding everything up. So now I just need to also put the little rubber grommets here to prevent it from slamming and making that loud noise. But other than that, it's ready to go. So if you have any questions about this video, please drop a comment below. I'll be sure to answer them. I hope you found it super helpful. And if you would have done anything differently, please let me know. Um, I'm always curious how everyone else is doing their van builds. But thank you so much for watching. Really, really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to see more van build episodes. Because like I said, in every other episode that we made, we try and document and record pretty much everything that we do. So again, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. This is, Can't you see? This is 100% going to the video. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. All right, let's get to it.